Welcome. Turn to your neighbor and shout across the aisle, welcome. Amen. There's more on the way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Let's stand together today and let's open our hearts to what God has for us today. I believe, I believe that he's going to bless in this place. I know he's going to bless. He always does. But we need to open our heart, open our mind, open our spirit to him. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forever, evermore, God. Thank you for being in this place with us today, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being here right now, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace, for your grace, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful, Lord. You're wonderful, Jesus. Jesus' name. God bless you. Why don't you find two or three people and warmly welcome them today to the house of the Lord. Give them a good Holy Ghost handshake. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. So good to see your faces here today. I propose that from the very first word that we utter from this point on, be praises and worship unto the Lord. Let's not waste a moment that we have in the presence of God worshiping with our sisters and brothers, which builds, go ahead and go to that first song, which builds strength. We can overcome with each other. I'd much rather fight a battle with you by my side. And God on my side. Come on, let's sing about it. Gonna get better. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, you're not gonna be there always.
today. I get so excited when I sing that song, and let me tell you why. It was really bad. It was really dark at a point in my life, but it got better. God was faithful. He does not lie. His word is true. Come on, if the Lord has done something for you today, we don't have time to just sit back and not give him praise. The enemy is attacking on every side. He's trying to close the mouths of the preachers and of the people. And Satan is coming in and trying to deceive and lead people away into false doctrine. And when people walk into this place, if the saints of God are not giving high praise to the one and truly God, the Most High God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, if we're not exalting Him and praising Him like we believe our very life depended upon it, what is going to draw those people to the Lord? Hallelujah. Let's exalt Him just for a moment. Let's lift up praise to the Lord. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for what you've done in this place. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, he's so worthy. He's mighty. He's awesome. He's deserving of every ounce, every bit, every little tiny bit of praise we give. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning.
worship him this morning. of God is here right now. Hallelujah. Let our King be lifted up. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest to our King. Let's give Him a wave offering right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's feel after Him just for a second. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're in the presence of of the Most High God, a holy God who loves His people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're so thankful for His presence here today because in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy and at His right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be His child today? Are you glad to be in His presence today? Hallelujah. Wow, when we're in the presence of God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. We just got to be a believer. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to go to him in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have one victory report today. Regina Gaboni uh, has a new job with better pay and less stress. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. It's an answer to a prayer of financial blessing. We're so excited about that. Uh, Sophie Randolph for her and her family. Guidance, peace, and a few situations. I want to lift them up. Brother Jefferson for Jennifer Friend, uh, his daughter. Uh, needs salvation and healing. Jason Refsnader for Lewis. Getting endoscopies surgery on Tuesday. We want to lift up Lewis. Uh, Gwendolyn Johnson for Timothy Murray, her friend, needs salvation and a special need. There's a court case coming up this week. We want to lift up Timothy. Uh, Sister Ali for a pastor, Sylvia Randolph, suffering from bleeding symptoms behind her eyes due to her diabetes, and we want God's healing virtue to flow there. Flow Self for William um, Ramali, Ramali uh, Salvation, and also for Barbara Ramel. All right. If you're here today and you put a prayer request in, please stand. This God that's high and lifted up, he's here with us right now. And if you're here today and you didn't put a prayer request in and you need prayer, also stand right now. And people full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, a believer in this awesome God of ours, this awesome Father that cares about His people is going to come and stand beside you. We're going to lift your need up to the Lord, believing that He is the prayer answering God and that He cares about His children. He's going to touch your situation right now. So there's several standing across the congregation. Let's go to them, to church, and let's pray with them. Everybody here should be standing right now and finding a prayer partner. Let's lift one another up to our most high God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray, church. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much for your presence. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our King. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you, Father, for being available to us to take these needs to you in prayer right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up each and every one of these needs to you. Each and every one of these situations to you, God. We place them in your hand, Lord. We place them in your hand, God. It's the best place for them to be. Hallelujah. We release them from our worry, from our anxiety. And we place them in your hands, God. 
We thank you for touching each and every one of these situations. Barbara Rennell, William Rennell, Sylvia Randolph, Timothy Murray, God. Thank you for your favor on Timothy and salvation. Thank you for touching Lewis, God. Thank you for touching Jennifer Friend, God. Thank you for your covering upon the Randolph family, Lord. I thank you for touching them, flowing over them, blessing them, keeping them, protecting them, healing that situation, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we see you high and lifted up, God, and your train filling this temple right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for answering these needs today, God. Thank you for the miracles and the victory that's taking place even now in, the, in our saints' lives, God, in our guests' lives, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's, let's give them high praise right now. Let's lift them high. Let's lift them high. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Why don't you turn to somebody right near to you, shake their hand, give them a high five, and say, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. The Lord is certainly good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Amen. How many believes that God's able to do what we just prayed about? Come on, how many believes that God's able to do that? Amen. Sister Johnson, I believe God's going to heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. She's suffering from a she's suffering from a tumor that's growing and is putting pressure. And I saw Brother Smith uh, anoint you with oil. Amen, and pray for you, but in Jesus' name, I believe right now that that tumor is shrinking. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. It's messing up her hearing. It's messing up wherever the nerve endings that it's pressing on, it just travels all over her body and messes everything up. This is a faithful woman. This is a godly woman. A praying woman and in Jesus name we ask you to honor faithfulness Lord God we ask you to honor Lord Jesus years and years of faithfulness and service Lord God that you would heal her hallelujah amen hallelujah I love brother and sister Johnson amen thank you Jesus and the Lord's able to do it Amen. They want her to have surgery. Hallelujah. But that, who wants to have surgery up, up there or anywhere? They wanted to do a cyber knife. We'll just let God, the God knife take care of it right now. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. Here we are, a lot of travel today, a lot of vacations, and we want to pray that God would continue to bless all of our people wherever they are today and uh, keep his hands of protection upon them. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Next couple weeks are going to be full of travel, and then, of course, Maryland just passed the law again that uh, school doesn't start till after Labor Day, and... Uh, so we got just another weekend, hallelujah, of September. But uh, we're excited about what God is going to unfold in our life. Amen. A couple of announcements for you to be aware of as we want to prepare ourselves for our morning offering. Allow God to be a part of our, our lives and our, through our obedience to Him. As we prepare for that, just a couple of announcements. This Saturday morning, amen, 8.30 a.m., uh, we're going to continue our ladies' prayer walk, hallelujah, in Urbana. And uh, we're just fighting the devil, amen, claiming the land that 
we know that God has given us spiritually and uh, really casting a net. Uh, so 8.30 behind the Urbana Library. Uh, be there, and uh, we're going to have a great time. Amen. And uh, then just, uh, uh, I only see half of, half of uh, let's see, Sister, Sister Maya here. Oh, behind Sister Maya, stand. Hallelujah. Where's uh, give me some choir lights there, Sister? Amen. Sister Jennifer, you gotta sit down. There we go. Amen. Sister Maya, and then Dion, would you stand? Amen, Brother Dion. Hallelujah. Amen. They have. Uh, been engaged for a little while, and after many, many meetings with uh, me, and me being able to get to know them and guide them and help them, uh, they are going to be married this Saturday. Hallelujah. <laughs> congratulate them and uh, been a beautiful process that wedding is open to all that would like to come and be a part of that that's going to be this Saturday at 11 a.m. so you get to pray at 830 and then you get to come and rejoice at 11 hallelujah and honor them the reception is by invitation but we do encourage all of our friends and family to be a part of that a ceremony at 11 a.m. Once again, we congratulate both of you. Hallelujah. We honor you. Amen. Sister Monique, come and give us some announcements. Not yet, Brother McGrath, all right? Not yet. I'm here to talk about Sunday school. Now, I have a few names I could call on that one. But I just, this is what I would like to do. The Lord has always had Sunday school in my heart ever since I was quite young, but unfortunately he put a love for it in my heart, but a necessity for me to operate in music ministry. So I never had the ability or the opportunity to work in Sunday school, although the desire was always there. And about three years ago, the Lord provided an opportunity for me to spend a year in Sunday school, which will always be probably one of the best memories for me. Um, and I want to say this, the area that I come from, and that I came from, South Louisiana, is a very strong Catholic community. And when that community was established, oil refineries and gas plants went up everywhere in South Louisiana. And the families that came in to work there needed churches. And um, part of the history, although it was settled by uh, Canary Islands, which is a Catholic-influenced area, but what converted an entire community was the Catholic Church coming into the area in which I grew up, St. Bernard Parish, and establishing catechisms and schools for the children all across the entire parish. And their influence was so strong that all of my life, everybody I went to school with, everybody I came across was Catholic. You didn't have to ask, what religion are you? Our entire community was Catholic. And their plan was, if you reach the children, you'll reach the family. And to this day, it is predominantly Catholic, the community that I grew up in. But the Lord has swept in, and we've got great churches in the area where there's apostolics and the Holy Ghost is alive and well in that community. But I say that to say this. Our Sunday school department and our nursery is not babysitting for us to come in here and have a great service. It's actually a ministry as strong as the pulpit ministry here, as strong as our choir ministry and journey class. And without Sunday school, the future church would be dead. And that's a reality. And I've been praying, and I've been meeting with Sister Hodo, and recently I prayed. I said, Lord, would you call teachers to Sunday school? Somebody that realizes the importance of pouring into children and preparing them for the future. 
And I believe the Lord is dealing with some hearts in this place. And some of you have probably had God messing with you a little bit, but fear may hold you back. I want to tell you that there's a pre-done curriculum. You don't have to make up your lessons. It's already set out for you, and it's super easy to follow. And your own creativity and your own love for the Lord will bleed over into teaching those children, and you will change a life. If you have ever taught Sunday school here at CLC, would you stand, please? If you've ever taught, just stand if you don't mind. I think we need to clap for these folks. Thank you. You can be seated. It is a ministry, and it is a needed ministry. And I was speaking to an elderly person a while back, and they said to me, the biggest mistake I ever made and this is to the parents and the non-Sunday school teachers that have families. The biggest mistake I ever made was depending upon the church to teach my children and give them what they needed. And she said, I did not do it at home like I should have. So coupled with parents that teach at home and that grow their children at home and try to establish them at home, and then our church ministry here in Sunday school, this place will thrive for many years to come, without a doubt. So if there is a thought about teaching Sunday school, I want you to pray about it. Pray and say, God, is this for me? You don't have to be experienced. You're going to get training, and we'll place you with good people to help you. You don't have to be experienced. All you have to have is a love for God and a desire to do ministry and a love for children. We have awesome Sunday morning services, right? Nobody wants to miss this. The good preaching, the good singing, but Sunday school is so fulfilling. And if I could encourage some of you, and I'm not just speaking, I'm speaking to younger people, young adults, but some of you folks that gave many, many years in your younger years, but feel like your time is done and you've given and that's that and you're ready to just enjoy the rest of your church life, can I call you back into ministry, please? Because in these last days, there's no time for any of us to be sitting on a pew and allowing everyone else to work and do it. We need to teach our Bible studies, disciple, do the journey classes, and put our hands to work wherever we can find. So I am encouraging you to join our Sunday school department. We need about six more Sunday school teachers, and we need several nursery workers. And the reason why we need so many is by insurance and law, we have to have two people in those classes. So if you don't want to be a teacher, but you would love to be an aide, that is available also. So please see Sister Hodo or myself if you'd like to be a part of that. We'll get your name in there. And if you're a covenant member, it is a covenant membership uh, ministry, but um, we'd love to get you activated and we would appreciate it so much. And I know that our children will. God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we had a great prayer meeting yesterday here in the sanctuary. Amen. Every time we have a Sunday night service, then that Saturday we have prayer meeting here from 5 to 6. And so that means because we had prayer meeting yesterday, that means we have church tonight. We're going to have a great time tonight. You don't want to miss tonight, 6 o'clock. It's going to be great. It's going to be encouraging. We've got something special for you tonight, and uh, you don't want to miss that. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Uh, we're all spread out all over, all over the, the country right now, but uh, at, at NAYC, uh, prior to NAYC, was the National Quizzing Tournament. And uh, we, of course, sent a team to the Nationals. But our team won the district finals, and then our team went to the Nationals. And this is unfortunately going to be strung out uh, so far that uh, it's going to be like, what, what, what's quizzing when we talk about it? Our quizzers are spread out uh, on vacation and such, but we are honoring all of the quizzers uh, that participated in the beginners, the juniors, and the seniors this Friday night. Everybody say this Friday night. This Friday night uh, is a banquet at the Duchess Daughter, and uh, the banquet's really open to anybody that'd like to come. It is a ticketed event. There'll be somebody in the foyer to 
uh, help you with that if you'd like to come and participate in that and honor all of the quizzers that were a part of the quizzing teams. Some of them couldn't uh, continue the process, uh, but we're still honoring them in that, uh, that banquet on Friday night. So if you'd like more information about that, you can see uh, Sister Kelly Griffin or Brother Nathaniel Letman. They'll be in the foyer uh, to help you with that information. Amen? Amen. Now, we, I came up here to take an offering. Hallelujah. So let's stand. Hallelujah. We want the Lord to bless our efforts as we honor him in our obedience and finances. Amen. The musicians will play. The ushers will guide you. Then we will pray over the giving after we've received it. How many want God to bless what you're about to give? Amen. So why don't we come and give to him and then allow God to bless us. Stretch forth your hands toward the offering and let's lift it to the Lord and ask them to bless our giving. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to be a giver. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for who you are in our lives, God, leading and guiding us every day, providing for us, your covering upon us. Lord, we lift this giving up to you. We ask you to bless it and multiply it for your kingdom's work. We're so grateful. We love you, praise you, honor you and bless you in Jesus name and everyone say amen praise the Lord everyone and it's so apropos that you're coming up here our bishop celebrated a birthday on August 3rd and we would like to honor him and sing happy birthday I'm gonna do a little throwback one two Oh, happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus here every day of the year. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And the best year you've ever had. So, I hear that Bishop is 67 years young. Good. And might I say, you know, I don't drink wine, but I've heard that it gets better as the years go by. And Bishop, you have been getting better as the years go by. Have you noticed? Bishop has been getting slim and trim. Bless his name. So as, as I was approached to uh, be the person to present this gift to you, I was thinking about a couple things. I would, <laughs> I would say, first and foremost, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. You may be seated. Um, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. And 
despite his silly tendencies. Actually, I feel like Jesus was a funny person himself. So you're, you're still being Christ-like. Um, but when I think about being Christ-like, I really think about pastor, bishop, because he really strives to be a living example of Christ. And, and I will say, it talks about in Jeremiah how God knew us even before we were born from our mother's womb. And Pastor Bishop here has been so much striving to be just like Christ that he knew me before I was born from my mother's womb. <laughs> In fact, he prayed for me. I was, he's been praying for me since before I was born. Uh, my mom was three weeks late and pregnant, and I was just delaying the process. And uh, Halloween was approaching, and that is the holiday she's hated the most since she was a kid. And she came to the altar and prayed, Bishop, please pray that this girl comes either before Halloween or after. And he laid hands and he prayed for her and I was born on the pew. No, I wasn't born on the pew. <laughs> but the next day, I came. <laughs> and that is proof that this man, I joke and I jest, but he has been praying, not just for me, but he has been praying and diligently serving and giving everything that he has for each and every one of us. And it is such an honor to have him as a bishop. And I know you guys probably thought my first scripture, I was going to go deep on you. But I actually am going to try and do something legitimately spiritual. Um, sorry. <laughs> but okay, I was thinking of different things. And in 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Yes, media team, bless his name. And I will say, I thought of Bishop with the scripture because he is instant in and out of season. The HCSB version says, proclaim the message, persist whether convenient or not. And Bishop has always been someone that no matter what, he is roaming around, lifting people up, encouraging them, preaching and teaching this word, whether it is convenient or not. When he's ready to go home and someone comes to him right before he exits, he will stop. He will give a word and encourage and lift. He never strays from this doctrine. He has stayed true to it. And you have served this church for so many years, longer than before you prayed for me in my mother's womb. And I pray that even with the shift of becoming now bishop, that this year and every year after will be the best years you've ever had, and that all that you pour out and the time that you give and your, the sacrifices you give, all of, all of that would be given back unto you at least tenfold. And that this year will be one of the best years you've ever had. God bless you. I love you. that was not born on Halloween. <laughs> you may be seated, and thank you very much for honoring me today. And um, <laughs> it's strange being 67. Uh, uh, Isn't God a good God? Yes, he is. Hey, listen. Whenever you're thinking that God is not being good to you, take a stupid pill. Because God cannot be not good. Amen. You may not understand him. It may not make any sense to 
you, but he's always good to you. Is that true? Is, it, is that true? And sometimes he doesn't do what you want him to do. That's because he's not a trained dog. He's a God that knows better than you and knows better than me. Right? So never interpret the lack of God doing what you want him to do than him being good to you all the time. Never get confused of that. Of that. Because if you do get confused in that, you will open yourself to the enemy that will accuse God before you. And he is a liar. He's good all the time. He can't be anything but good. So when you're where you don't want to be, know that he's good. And lift him up. And if you do, you'll feel good. If you're grumpy, you'll be miserable. But if you give God praise and honor him, you'll feel better. But he was always good. Amen. Thanks. Amen. Well, she might not have been on born on Halloween, but she is frightening. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Over the years, we have been privileged to be a part of many, many lives that have been planted, have been watered, and then as they have bloomed, the Lord has repositioned. One of those great stories, as along with all the other great stories, is our good Daniel Pinnock that's here. <laughs> Brother Daniel was also born not in this church, but he was born while his mother was attending this church. And we have been privileged to watch him grow and mature. And then God directed him to go to Bible college in Stockton. And then upon completion of Bible college, the Lord opened up an opportunity and a door for him to participate in uh, a church that is launching daughter works. And so uh, we are privileged to be able to uh, honor Brother Daniel Pinnock and kind of watch him launch into his calling. And I'd like Brother Pinnock to come and just leave a word of testimony. This will be his, he's been here for uh, the summer, and this will be his last opportunity here at Christian Life Center. And we just want to congratulate you and honor you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Can we give that unto God? Can we clap unto the Lord for what he's done? And would you put your voice with it? Would you give God a shout of praise today? He's worthy. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, uh, Pastor and Libby, for that. Uh, you got to be instant in season and out of season, right? <laughs> Amen. But... Uh, you know, it is an honor to be here. Uh, I've been here for a few weeks just to, uh, you know, rest and see family before uh, starting a church in Carson City, Nevada. Uh, amen. And uh, I just want to encourage you that uh, revival is happening all over the world. In spite of what you might hear and see, uh, whatever however negative it may be, God is pouring out of his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. And uh, 
since being here, we've had uh, probably about over 10 people get baptized in the lovely name of Jesus for the remission of their sins in Carson City. And uh, I'm excited because I'm, I'm stepping into a church that is ready for the revival that God is bringing. I'm stepping into a church that is looking and wanting the harvest that God is wanting to give. And I want to tell you that it's not just happening in the West Coast. It's happening here in the East Coast. It's happening in this city. Hallelujah. And what God is looking for this morning is men and women that are going to position themselves to be anointed and used of God to reap the harvest that he's set forth in the field. If you want to see growth, if you want to see people get baptized, if you want to see the Holy Ghost being poured out upon all flesh, then you've got to get involved in the field. You've got to stand, hallelujah, and say, God, I'm going to be and do what you've called me to be. If you want revival, I want you to put your hands together and shout yes to the Lord. Come on, shout yes to the Lord. I want revival in my city. I want revival in my home. I want revival in my church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I don't want to preach, but I am honored to be here, and I am excited to hear the good reports. I'm excited to hear about people getting saved. And God adding to the church and to the kingdom daily. Amen. May the Lord bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am so glad that we serve an awesome God. And I'm so thankful that he's so personal. That we don't have to go through religious hoops and other people but we can access God by simply calling on the name of Jesus. You say that name and he will appear. That is his word, that is his promise to you. But how many of you know that even though he is so personal sometimes, he's also high and lifted up. We serve an exalted, a majestic, a wonderful savior, amen? He is king of kings, he is lord of lords. No matter who proclaims power in this world, you must know that Jesus is lord, hallelujah. And we magnify you. Worship with us as we sing. Let's magnify, amen, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who is God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise your name, God. You alone are worthy. You are King of all the earth. We magnify you in this place today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God.
before Not because I've been so good You've always been there for me To provide my every need You were there when I was lonely You were there in all my pain You guided my footsteps you were shelter from the rain And it was you who Made my life complete You are to be my everything And that is why I say Life would be Help me to say Jesus, I love you. Yes, I do. Because you can. I couldn't imagine what life would be. You are the joy of my salvation. You're the peace in my storm. But loving on protecting me, you sheltered me from harm. You were Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You're my strong tower, my dearest and best friend.
truly love the Lord this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good today. Amen. How many can wave a hand and say, He's good? He's good today. He was good yesterday. He's going to be good tomorrow. He's going to be good next week. Amen. Doesn't mean that everything's going to be perfect. But uh, as my dad said, he's still going to be good. He's still going to be, he can't, he can't be anything but good. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, somebody is going to leave here today with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost today, then you're in a church that believes in the infilling of the power of God. Biblically stated as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or the infilling of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And the Bible is very clear and indicates to us that we need that. It is a necessity. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a necessity. Amen. 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 If you're able to stand, let's stand. Let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Turn to that other neighbor and say, it's not an option. It's a necessity. 
If it's a necessity, it's not an option. It's like breathing. It's a necessity. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's tighter than a bass drum in here. But uh, there's people that have the Holy Ghost here today that need it again. Amen? Amen. How many will preach with me just for a little bit? Hallelujah. We're just going to jump into the middle of a story found in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. In verse 11, it's John the Baptist speaking. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. This is the beginning verbiage of transition. Biblically, this is where the shift begins to happen. The groundwork is being laid. The understanding is being presented. That we would be moving from a nation born into the kingdom by birth, natural birth. And then we would be moving from this point forward into a godly nation born through a spiritual birth. And this transition in Matthew chapter 3, spoken by John the Baptist, is the beginning of what we have come to understand and know as the Pentecostal experience, the apostolic life. It is what we as Pentecostal apostolics have come to recognize as being a Christian, Christ-likeness. Because without Christ in you, you cannot be Christ-like. Talking about Christ, singing about Christ, even acknowledging Christ does not give a person the ability to be like Christ. The only way, the only opportunity, and the only privilege one would have to be Christ-like is to have Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. And so we want to talk today about the Holy Ghost. We want to preach about the Holy Ghost. We want to acknowledge the Holy Ghost. I'm going to preach it until everybody says amen about the Holy Ghost. We're going to talk about it. The devil doesn't like it. The world doesn't like it. Sin doesn't like it. The nominal churches don't like it. Other places don't like it because when you get the Holy Ghost, you got to be submitted. The only way to be Christ-like is to submit your own ways, your own wants, your own desires, your own wills and say, not my will, Lord, but thine be done. Can somebody say amen to that? Hallelujah. I want to be filled completely with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want from the tip of my toes to the top of the hair follicles on the top of my head to be Holy Ghost filled, hallelujah. Does anybody else want to be just totally immersed in the Holy Ghost? I've got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been empowered by the Holy Ghost. I walk in the Holy Ghost. I live in the Holy, how about you? Do you, has anybody been filled with the Holy Ghost in this place? Amen, amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, does it look like it? Do you know it? I'm going to turn to your neighbor and say, do you know I've been filled with the Holy Ghost? Oh, 
Oh, come on, somebody, because I'm Christ-like. Hallelujah. I'm walking in the authority and the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Come on, somebody. Am I an overcomer? Turn to your neighbor and say, am I, am I an overcomer? Oh, yes. Come on. Come on, somebody. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Yesterday in prayer, the Lord said, you need to preach about the Holy Ghost today. I said, okay. So here we go. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise. If you're glad that God is not dead and he's alive, give him a shout of praise. Amen, you may be seated. The Holy Ghost is not a new thing. The Holy Ghost in its function is not a New Testament thing. The Holy Ghost is simply the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God has always been in operation. And somebody say amen to that. From the very beginning of time, before there was even humanity, it was the Spirit of God that moved upon the face of the earth. It was the Spirit of God, the activeness of God, the authority of God, the presence of God that created and set in motion everything that we have come to understand as life. And it's the Holy Ghost that continues the operation of authority and power. Without the Holy Ghost in place, everything will fall apart. Without the power of God in place, the presence of God in place, the authority of God in place, then there is nothing but chaos, misery, tears and crying. There was a time though in the New Testament, recently, I say in our time frame, that the baptism of the Holy Ghost in its New Testament experience was a unique experience in terms that it wasn't widespread. The revelation of the Holy Ghost had not yet been widespread. And it was believed in and by people who are identified as Pentecostal. Somebody say Pentecostal. Now just like churches today, there was only one church. And as time progressed, there was factions and fractions and offshoots. And so we've got all kinds of varieties of church. How many has been to a variety of church? It's like going down the cereal aisle. How many has been down the cereal aisle? You got some sugary cereal. You got some colorful cereal. You got some bland cereal. You got cereal, but by the time you get home, you got to add stuff to it to make it exciting. You got cereal that'll keep you up. You got cereal that'll turn your mouth different colors. You got cereal that makes you think of other foods. You got cereal that pretends to be cookies. You got cereal that takes good things and coats them with bad things so you can get it down. Cereal aisle is just like the church section in the Yellow Pages. 
you will find something that your taste buds will like. vessel the Holy Ghost and the sign of the Holy Ghost is the evidence that God has been given supreme authority of that person's life and evidence to all others that God has been given supreme authority to that life this evidence as we know it, has been given a theological term. It's called glossolalia. It's the supernatural wonder of speaking a language that the individual who receives the Spirit has not learned and does not know what he or she is speaking. Oh, come on, I'm, a, I, I'm on a thick branch, not on the edge of a limb out here. This evidence of tongues that accompanies the infilling of the Holy Ghost is so that there is an unquestionable understanding that I have not just been swept away by emotion, that I have not been swept away by a group making a decision, that I have not been swept away with just the of the moment, because you cannot speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance unless God fills you with His Spirit. Amen. This unlearned language that is spoken by an individual who speaks in other tongues, as the Bible says, has been made evident and proclaimed by other language groups. This is seen in the book of Acts chapter 2, and it is also seen in present day. We have had missionaries 
come through our congregation where their field of labor has brought them to languages that are not English. It has been recorded that these uh, cultures in faraway lands with no English language education, when receiving the Holy Ghost, it has been reported that they have spoken in English, which is another tongue for them. It has happened even in this congregation where someone has received the Holy Ghost, a visitor who spoke a different language than English was standing near to that person. As the person began to receive the Holy Ghost, they began to speak in another language and the visitor understood what she was saying and came to her after service and said, I did not know that you spoke my language. And she says, I don't know who you are or what you speak of. And there was confusion, and she said, well, you were talking in my language. You were saying, God is great. You were saying, this is the answer. You were saying, this is the spirit that I have spoken of. And it was a witness unto me. You don't know that language? She says, I don't know that language. This evidence of speaking with other tongues, as described in the Bible, somebody say the Bible, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, has always been in recent times specifically but always been discredited by traditional religious beliefs if you're here today as a visitor and you're from another church we welcome you we honor you we don't speak against anything that you have been taught except that we must come from the scriptures and the scriptures in Acts chapter 2, verse number 4, plainly tells us that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It has at various times been fought. It has been ridiculed. And it has been pushed aside by those who want to dismiss it as some emotional gibberish. It defines logic. It defines human, defies logic and human understanding. It's not something that you can conjure up, this Holy Ghost experience. It's not something you can purchase, this Holy Ghost experience. It's not something you can buy, this Holy Ghost experience. It is in fact a supernatural experience that only comes when someone recognizes that I've tried everything on my own and I cannot make it. It only comes when someone says I'm willing to step down from the throne of my life and give God the proper place of authority in my life. It only comes when somebody says, I've come to the end of my road and I'm ready to turn my life over to Jesus Christ and I'm ready to let him empower me. It only comes when somebody truly can say, it's not my way, it's not my will, it's not what I want, but it's what you want, God. It's your will and it's your way in my life. It only comes when somebody recognizes that you can't say no to sin and you can't get away from sin and you need the empowerment of the supernatural spirit of God to give you the authority to walk away, not just say no, but walk away from sin. It demands, this Holy Ghost, demands belief in a supernatural power of God. You can't believe in a part-time God and have the Holy Ghost. You can't believe in a sometime God and have the Holy Ghost. You can't believe on a weekend God and have the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, you get God on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday 
and Friday and Saturday. When you get the Holy Ghost, God wakes you up in the middle of the night. When you get the Holy Ghost, God says, I need you to go this direction or that direction. When you get the Holy Ghost, he says, put your hands on this, take your hands off of this. When you get the Holy Ghost, you become Christ-like. And the characteristics of Jesus Christ begin to be made manifest in your life. When you get the Holy Ghost, what motivates you is the things of God, not the things of this world. When you get the Holy Ghost, uh, it's the things of God that begin to pump through your very veins uh, and nothing matters uh, but God and his kingdom uh, and the things of God. The Holy Ghost gives validity as a modern miracle of God's hand at work in the lives of common people. This is not an experience for the rich. This is not an experience for the educated. This is not an experience for the poor. This is not an experience for some culture. It is an experience for whosoever will. It's an experience for anybody. Anybody that wants Jesus Christ in your life, you get it through the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. You don't get it by signing a card. You don't get it by going under the water. You don't get it by just showing up. You don't get it by just acknowledging and believing. You get it by totally submitting yourself 100% to Jesus Christ uh, and say, I'm ready to turn around uh, and walk in a new direction uh, and I'm ready to live my life for you. When you get the Holy Ghost, it reveals that God has indeed been limited by archaic and limiting religious statutes born out of humanism, rituals, and just form. But no, make no mistake about it. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is real. And it is the only element that will give you power over sin. It's the only element that will give you the authority over the devil. It is the only element that will give you the power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It is the only power that gives you the ability to say no to your past and yes to your future. It is an undisputable fact of our current day that the power of the Holy Ghost is real and God is still pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. Come on, somebody. If you got the Holy Ghost, you need to acknowledge that this morning. The Holy Ghost is currently claimed by some 550 million people worldwide. You do a study on the Pentecostal movement, it's growing three times faster than the birth rate of our world. Holy Ghost filled people have always been ridiculed. From the very first outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they have been ridiculed and were still ridiculed. They've been mocked and were still being mocked. They are rebuked and were still being rebuked. They've been belittled and were still being belittled. But we still remain. We're still standing strong. And we're still enjoying the Holy Ghost power in our life. Because Holy Ghost people are in a genuine experience with the Lord. They are sincere in their worship and they're Bible-based in their doctrine. I want you to know that sitting around you, to your left, to your right, in front of you and behind you, it may be one or two people over from you. It may be one or two people in front of you. You may have to search over one person 
But I want you to know that there are people in this church that are truly, supernaturally changed by the power of the Holy Ghost in their life. Sitting in this audience, there was alcoholics, but when they got the Holy Ghost, they got rid of that alcoholic desire, not on their own power, but by the power of God. Sitting in this congregation were drug addicts, but as soon as they got the Holy Ghost, they were freed from drugs. Sitting in this congregation were liars and cheaters, uh, immoral people, adulterers and fornicators. Uh, but when they got the Holy Ghost, uh, they got their life totally changed uh, 100%. I don't think you could tell them that the Holy Ghost is not real and it's not still available today. Because there's people in this room that can say, once I was lost, but now I'm found. Once I was blind, but now I see. Is there anybody else in the room that changed my life 100%? Is there anybody in the room that can say the Holy Ghost is real, it's real, I know it's real. This Pentecostal experience is real, it's real, it's real, it's real. When a person gets the Holy Ghost, they walk away from sin, not back to sin. When a person gets the Holy Ghost, they lay down their habits. They don't pick them up again. A person gets the Holy Ghost, they become faithful to Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost stops a person from gossiping. The Holy Ghost convicts a person of lying. The Holy Ghost keeps us from backsliding. The Holy Ghost conquers the sin in our life, if we'll let it. When a person obeys the message of Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. They become new creatures in Christ because old things are passed away and all things have become new in your life. When you repent of your sins, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues, you cannot stay the same. You cannot be the same person. You have the same personality. You have the same makeup, but you cannot know life that you lived. You got to live a new life. And God empowers you to live that new life. Hallelujah. When you get the Holy Ghost and you walk out of this building, well, you walk out full of power and full of grace and full of victory, the devil comes and knocks you on your back. You have a decision to make. Have I really experienced something or is it just an emotional deal? The only way to find out is to get yourself back up and say, in Jesus' name, by the authority of the power of God that lies inside of me, get thee behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. If you've got the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, there is no devil in hell that can stop you, hinder you, disrupt you, and take you off course. As a Holy Ghost filled person, you are impacted, your family should be impacted, your community should be impacted, your city should be impacted, everything that you are a part of should be impacted. People should say, what happened to you? What in the world is going on with you? What did you do? Did you get glasses? Did you get a haircut? Did you change something about you? Is your eyes still? 
I don't know what it is about you. That's when the authority of the power of God can come forth in your life and you say this, uh, once I was doing it all by myself and I couldn't make it just a day at a time, but now I've got Jesus Christ on the inside of me and it's not just a belief, it's not just a word, but I have submitted myself to his authority and power and he's filled me with his spirit. What exactly is the Holy Ghost? And is it for us today? Can it be received as it was received in the book of Acts? Or is it just for a few? people or can anybody receive the Holy Ghost I want to tell you that the Holy Ghost is not a new thing in the Bible because the Holy Ghost is just the infilling of the Spirit of God so the Spirit of God has always been present the Holy Ghost denotes the infilling of the power of God right but the power of God has always been present. The power of God in the Old Testament was something that was on the outside of people. And it moved on people. It directed people. The Holy Ghost would be present in form. And the Holy Ghost would, would be present uh, to the people to confirm. But in the New Testament, the Holy Ghost did not stay only moving on the outside but in the new testament god said i need it to be on the inside because i need you to actually walk with me from a converted heart and the only way that that can happen is for me to empower you from within not just influence you from without so the, the Holy Ghost has been present in form from the Old Testament to the New Testament. How many has got a second for me to go through this? I want you to know that the Holy Ghost is not something new. I want you to know that the power of God is not something new. The application has shifted and changed because it was once just a people that God moved on, that were among a people, but now God infills anyone that would allow him to become a part of the people. And so we go all the way back to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 8. The Bible tells us that Moses brought Aaron before the people. The Bible says that he, he washed him with water. Now we don't, it's 1154. We have church tonight at six. People make decisions that are not based upon anything but their own lustful desires about what time church is supposed to end and if they're going back tonight. So I only got literally five minutes to go through the entire Bible about the Holy Ghost. Now God can fill you with the Holy Ghost in one millisecond. But it takes a human brain in 2017 about 20 minutes to be convinced that you need it. Or that it's even real. So the Bible very clearly in the book of Leviticus types and shadows what's going to happen in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Remember the last scripture that was on the screen, at least that one over there, was that you've got to repent. You've got to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen to that? Yeah. Way back in the beginning, God was performing the same operation on his people in Leviticus when Moses brought Aaron before the people. And the Bible says that he washed him with water. That's the, repent, the, the baptism of cleansing. He put on a coat and a girdle and robed upon him God's covering, God's strength 
and a spotless robe. He bound him with an ephod and bound it unto him. And that is a type, we don't have time to go through it, just believe me. It's a type and shadow of praise. He put upon him a breastplate, which is typed of God's righteousness upon him. He put upon his head the mitre, which is the helmet of salvation. And then in verse, uh, 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 verse, verse number, um, verse number, what is it? What is it? Verse, verse seven, what is it? Verse seven, verse, verse nine, what is it? I can't, I don't have it written. I just, just nine, nine. This is very, very well rehearsed, very nine. Let's go in a place of the crown. Verse 10, verse 10, verse 10. And then, verse 10. And then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified him. He poured the oil upon Aaron's head and he sanctified him, which is the indication of the Holy Ghost. We see through the scriptures that when there is water associated with people in the Old Testament, it was a cleansing. We see in the New Testament, when water is associated, it's a cleansing. It's a baptism. We see when, when there is a pouring of oil, when there is a running of oil from the top of the head down into the beard or into the garments. It is a type and shadow of the Holy Ghost to come that when in the New Testament uh, that sat upon each of them uh, cloven tongues uh, like as a fire uh, and they all began to speak uh, in other tongue. Uh, when we go on and we see in the book of Ezekiel, we see Ezekiel's vision and the wind that breathed the life uh, into the valley of dry bones uh, is likened under the Holy Ghost. Uh, Ezekiel saw his people, they were dead. They were spiritually dead and they were hopeless. And God challenged his prophet to preach to that which was dead with his promise that he would breathe life into them. And the prophet began to preach and the Bible says there was a shakening and there was an accompanying noise as God began to minister. He told him in Ezekiel 37 and verse number 11, he said, son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel behold they say our bones are dried our hope is lost we are cut off from our parts therefore prophesy and say unto them thus saith the Lord God behold my people I'll open up your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you in to the land of Israel there is an understanding that the power of God has always been present and moving on people uh, and moving uh, on uh, uh, people. No wonder that we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 19, the Bible says, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring nothing to the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by the wisdom knew not God. It pleased God, by the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. There's always got to be an Ezekiel that prophesies to the people and to the congregation that the wind is about to blow. God designed it from the very beginning and he took it all the way to the church of Corinth that there's always got to be somebody to say, the devil's a liar and God is true. And you got to be filled with his spirit. You got to have the wind of God in your life. The reason is, is because in verse number 22, the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after a wisdom. But we, we preach Christ crucified. What does that mean? It means that there's a process. There's a message. There's a gospel. And there's a method to when Jesus moves on his people and there is a transition of power from the outside to the inside. Ezekiel prophesied the wind came, the bones came together, it came from the outside and then made it to the inside. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not good enough for you to feel the power of God in this room and you walk away and it stays right here. It is not good enough that you hear about the power of God. It's not good enough 
that you sing about the power of God. You've got to have the power of God on the inside of your life. We see very clearly in Ezekiel 47, we're not going to go through it, talking about the waters that flow, talking about where they came from, talking about wading out into the waters, measuring a thousand. It was a river, could not pass over. The waters were risen, waters to swim in, then waters that I couldn't uh, even uh, stand in. The Holy Ghost flows from the temple. The Bible tells us in Ezekiel, the Holy Ghost, the water flows from the temple towards the east. Uh, It was in the eastern skies, the Bible tells us, uh, that the skies are going apart when Jesus returns from his church. The waters flow from the right side of the house, uh, the place of favor with God. It's pinpointed to the beginning at the altar. It all begins uh, at the altar of repentance. Uh, When somebody makes a decision uh, that I can't do it on my own, uh, I've got to have God in my life uh, and I'm willing to turn my life over to him. That's when the wind blows. That's when the water begins to flow. That's when the oil begins to be applied. And that's when somebody's life can be changed in an instant in Jesus' name. We continue on into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 28, verse number nine. Whom shall teach wisdom? And whom shall he say to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, uh, from precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Verse number 11. Old Testament, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to whom he said, this is the rest. What's the rest? Uh, This leaven experience, this stammering lips uh, and another tongue. This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. I want you to know that if you're tired of living life, uh, you need the rest of the Holy Ghost uh, in your life. Uh, You need the refreshing of God's power in your life. Uh, Isaiah was saying, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, You can't do it without God. And he's saying, uh, it's with the stammering lips uh, and another tongue that you're going to the rest of the Holy God in your life. Uh, it's not the tongue uh, that you're going to find the refreshing uh, that's going to come uh, from the bottom of your soul when it's over to Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody shout out, I need him. The Holy Ghost uh, is the rest, R-E-S-T. It's the rest for a barren soul when sin has taken everything out of you. Sin has beaten you down uh, to the bottom. When sin has ripped you to shreds, uh, it's the refreshing of the Holy Ghost uh, that can put you back together again. Uh, It's the rest uh, of the Holy Ghost uh, that'll put you to bed at night and you'll sleep like a baby. You'll wake up in the morning uh, and you'll be ready to take on uh, another day. Uh, I can't do it by myself. I can't do it without you, God. I've got to have the rest and the refreshing. The Holy Ghost has always been in operation. The power of God has always been in operation. The anointing has always been in operation. And God moves uh, in his way. And he moves in that way. And he moves uh, in this way. And he's saying, you need me. You need me. And the people are saying, we want you or we don't want you. But I got a determined mind that I every day say, I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus, in my life going on in the scriptures in the Old Testament, the book of Joel promises us in Joel chapter 2 verse 25, he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, and my great army which I sent among you. He says, you've had a lousy life. You've done everything on a dead end track. You've had no address of destination. You've been spinning around and everything is taken from you. Your world has taken from you. Your family is taken from you. Your friends have taken from you. The caterpillar's taken from you. Your, your bills have taken from you. Your health is taken from you. He says, but there's going to come a day that I'm going to restore everything to you. You're going to eat in plenty. You're going to be satisfied. You're going to praise the name of the Lord your God. number 27 he says and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel 
it's going to be a sign to you. You're going to know that I'm right there. It's going to be without a doubt. Verse 28, he says, and it shall come to pass. This is the Old Testament. Looking forward to the next extension of the empire. God. This is the Old Testament who's accustomed to God moving on people and they're looking forward and he's saying it's not going to be on you anymore. It's going to be in you uh, in the coming days. He said it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody. Not just a Jew. Not just a believer. Not just one who says uh, they're a Christian but anybody who says I can't make it on my own uh, anymore. Anyone who says I can't do it by myself. In verse number 29, he says, as the last verse of 29, he says, I will pour out of my spirit. And we transition from the Old Testament and we get into the New Testament and Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1 when he says, And the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were with all, with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all, everybody say all, all filled with the Holy Ghost and all, everybody say all. Of all began to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit uh, gave them uh, the utterance. Skipping down to verse number 12. And they were all amazed. Uh, and they were in doubt saying one to another, what meaneth this? Uh, anytime God moves, uh, there's always going to be somebody that says, uh, I don't believe it. Anytime God moves, uh, there's always going to be somebody that says, what in the world is going on? Anytime God moves, uh, there's always going to be somebody that doubts it. But I got news for you. You cannot take away what God has done for me. You cannot diminish uh, the experience uh, that God has given to me. You may not want it, but don't you take away my experience. They begin to think in verse number 13 that they were few wine. But Peter in verse number 14, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice. And he said to them, I'm just reading this. This is good stuff right here. Amen. We can have all of everybody come to the platform if they want to, but I'm going to read this. <laughs> he said, all you in Jerusalem, be it known unto you and hearken to my words. These people are not drunken. They're not on drugs. They're not emotionally wrought. They're not over with some kind of experience. Uh, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What did Joel say? He said, in the last days, it's going to come to pass. God is going to pour out upon his spirit, upon all flesh. Uh, and everybody is going to have that action to the spirit. Uh, skipping down to verse 31. He said, in seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. This is the connection. He's making it. He's saying, and his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did seek corruption. But this Jesus hath God raised up. Therefore we are all witnesses. Therefore being by the right hand of God and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this which ye now see. Everybody say see. see. And hear. Here, when you get the Holy Ghost, there is a visual change in a person. And when you get the Holy Ghost, there is an audible evidence with the person. You can't get the Holy Ghost by saying, I believe, I believe. No, there is a physical change. And there is an audible expression with the Holy Ghost. It's through the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament. When the power of God touches somebody, they've got to change how they look and they've got to change uh, what they say. somebody when you get the power of the Holy Ghost you don't walk like you used to walk you don't talk like you used to talk 
You don't look like you used to look. Peter is preaching this message. He says, what you are seeing right now and what you are hearing right now is the culmination of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's saying what you are seeing and what you are hearing is not the result of some new wine that they found. It's not the result of some drug that they've taken. It's not the result of some kind of new uh, relational experience on the human level. But what you're seeing uh, and what you're hearing right now is the death, uh, the burial, and the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ uh, being made manifest uh, in the lives of these people. And verse number 37, and when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Ladies and gentlemen, when the Bible is presented and the Holy Ghost convicts, don't sit on your hands, don't wait for another week, don't try to figure it out, but you need to be like these people in verse number 37 when they said, what do I do? What do I do? I realize that I need God in my life. And Peter, he didn't say, call the preacher. He didn't say, come next Sunday. He didn't say, and this is a message to all of our Holy Ghost filled people right here. He didn't say, uh, wait till another revival. Uh, but Peter, the first time he ever preached uh, was the message uh, of salvation. Uh, the first time that he ever got up uh, was the time uh, that he gave the message uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it may be the first time that you ever preach uh, in your workplace uh, or in your home. Uh, you let it be this message. Uh, and Peter said unto them, repent uh, and be baptized, uh, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let's stand. What's the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I just skipped six pages. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen to that. There's more to it. Hallelujah. I could keep sealing it up about that we're sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, that the Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. Hallelujah. That what we have on the inside right now is a result uh, of giving life over to Him uh, is just a small measure of what we are going to experience uh, over it's the same on the reverse. The hell that you're experiencing right now on this earth is a small measure of the hell that you're going to experience if you don't get your life right. But I'm glad to experience the little bit of heaven right now on this side. It gives me an indicator of what I'm going to experience on the other side. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Everybody say it's from the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. It's the promise that was given to Abraham. That's what the Holy Ghost is. It's the angel that wrestled with Jacob that day. That's the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. It's the coat of many colors uh, that Joseph had. Uh, the Holy Ghost, it's the rainbow uh, that was given as a sign to Noah. The Holy Ghost, the power of God, is the staff that Moses held uh, in his hand that day. Power of God. It was the, the scarlet thread hanging from Rahab's window. Uh, the power of God was the jawbone uh, laying at the feet of Samson. Uh, the Holy Ghost, it was the stone uh, that flew from David's sling. Uh, the power of God, it was the splendor of Solomon's temple. Uh, the power of God, the Holy Ghost, was the fire that was called down uh, that day by Elijah. It was the mantle uh, that Elisha lifts uh, from the river bank uh, and says, Where is is uh, the God uh, of Elijah and the waters parted. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is the fourth man in the fire with the Hebrew children. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is the unseen presence uh, that stops the mouth uh, of the lions uh, for Daniel. What's the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is light when you need it in the middle of darkness. Uh, the Holy Ghost is bread when you're hungry. It's water when you're thirsty. The Holy Ghost is hope when you're in despair. It's 
help when you're in trouble. It's joy when you're nothing but grieving. Uh, it's comfort when you're lonely. Uh, it's peace uh, in the middle of the storm. Uh, it's mercy when you're guilty. It's grace uh, when you're lost. Uh, it's strength uh, when you're weary. It's victory when you feel defeated. Uh, it's your promise. It's your heavenly right. Uh, it's your escape uh, out of the prison house. Uh, it's real. It's real. It's glorious. It's powerful. And it's here right now. The Holy Ghost is the fire that's shut up in your bones. The Holy Ghost is direction when there's nothing but confusion. The Holy Ghost is a new life and shedding off of the old life. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, they were all filled. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. In Acts chapter 8, verse 17, and they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 9, verse 17, and Ananias went his way, entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that unto thee in the way. Thou camest has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He got his name changed from Saul to Paul. In Acts chapter 10, verse 44, and while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter. And on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How do they know that? Verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost uh, as well as we? Acts chapter 11, verse 16, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Chapter 19, one and it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain, certain disciples. He said to them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? They said, We don't even know that there be any Holy Ghost. He said, What were you baptized unto? They said, Under John's baptism, verse 4. And then Paul said, John, verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, uh, saying that you got to believe on him that would come after him. That is Christ Jesus. Uh, when they heard this, they were baptized. And Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake. Verse 6. And then Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. On the day of Pentecost, 120 got the Holy Ghost. The church people received the Holy Ghost. Paul, who saw who became Paul, received the Holy Ghost. Cornelius and his household received the Holy Ghost. And you can also receive uh, the Holy Ghost. Oh, somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody shout unto God with the voice of triumph this morning. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's going to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost in the next five minutes. If you've got to be somewhere in ten minutes, God's going to do it in five minutes so you can still be there, okay? Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues? Talk to him. Altar counselors, come quickly. Hallelujah. Altar counselors, come quickly. Come on. Ask him, have you received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues? Amen. Life leaders, come help me too. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues? I've got prayer partners down here, good guys and ladies that want to pray for you that God would fill you with His Spirit. Because without being filled with the Spirit, you cannot be a conqueror. Hallelujah. You cannot be free from sin. You can't do it. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, today's a great day to have all your sins washed away from your life. 
It's not about joining this church. Baptism is not for joining a church. It's for having your sins washed away. Amen. We've got all the, everything you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. If you recognize that you don't want to leave here today without being clean, and you don't want to leave here without being empowered, then you need to start making your way down to the front right now. Hallelujah. Look at this beautiful couple right here. Hallelujah. Wonderful. <laughs> Amen. Our prayer partners, they're going to talk to you just for a second. Hallelujah. So you talk to somebody next to you and you ask them, have you received the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues? If they said no, then I want you to talk to them and say, well, let's go down. I'll go down with you and we'll pray together that God will fill you. Go ahead and talk to them right now. If they said no, go ahead and talk to them right now. Say, I'll, I'll go down and pray with you. I'll pray with you. That's right. Come on. Come on. This is it. This is the time right now. Come on. He's going to do it in five minutes. He's going to do it. Doesn't take God long. Doesn't take God long. Come on. That's right. Come on. Now you may say, well, I experienced peace. I experienced joy. That's not, the Bible hadn't said nothing about that in receiving the Holy Ghost. There's all kind of joy here today. That doesn't mean everybody here's got the Holy Ghost. There's all kind of peace. That doesn't mean everybody's got the Holy Ghost. Right now, right now. So congregation, as people are making their decisions right now, lift your hands and let's pray right now. Come on, lift your hands. That God would release this right now. That God would release it. Come on, there's still time. There's still time. If you're in the audience and God is working on you, we need some... We need some care leaders, some, some home group, life group leaders, some life group leaders to help us down here in the front pray. I need some more help in the, in, the, in the altar. I need some more help in the altar. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need some more help in the altar. Hallelujah, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right here. Hallelujah. Right here. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need some more, more help in the altar. Come on, I, there's, there's, at least, there's at least four more people that need to make a decision today that you want to leave here with God in your life. Come on, there's at least four more people, I know. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, there's at least four more people that need to make a decision this morning about the Holy Ghost in your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's right, that's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's pray, congregation. Let's pray that God, is, that God will help us. Come on, you don't, need to, you don't need to be bound to that pew. Come on, right now is the day. Right now is the opportunity. Right now is the moment. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Right now is the moment. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate another moment. Don't hesitate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our prayer partners are, are, are encouraging them and leading them into repentance. Hallelujah. Why don't we all as a congregation lift our hands up and why don't we say, God, if there's any sin in my life, God, I ask you to forgive me. If there's any sin in my life, Lord Jesus, I want to repent of it, Lord God. If there's any sin, Lord Jesus, get it right. All right, right over here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's right, that's right. Lord, I want to be released from this. I'm going to be released from this, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we've got to repent, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, God. He's faithful to forgive, Lord Jesus. He's faithful to forgive, Lord Jesus. Let's turn the bass on. He's faithful to forgive, Lord God. He's faithful to forgive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, now, let's lift our voice to heaven right now and begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. Congregation, begin to worship Him in Jesus' name. Begin to worship Him. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Lord, we ask God for the freedom of your spirit, Lord God. We ask God to do the flow, Lord Jesus. In your name, God. In your name. That's right. Altar counselors, go ahead and lay your hands on them. In Jesus' name. Lay your hands on them. In Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Now the rest of the congregation, why don't you come around the front and say, Lord God, I'm living this life that you've called me to live. Continue to Gather around the front and make that commitment right now. 